a sobering look at why capital punishment is wrong (laughs) and the negative effect of the death penalty. (laughs) We saw the first power, so you know what that means. We are live at the Chevalier Theater, and we are excited to be here to talk about the 1990 supernatural drama action film, The First Power, starring Lou Diamond Phillips. Now, if you don't know anything about The First Power, let me read how the Joe Blow website describes the movie, because they do a damn good job. They say this, they say, A vicious serial killer is tracked down by Detective Russell Logan. Although the maniac is executed in the gas chamber, the murders begin again. A devil worshiper, the killer has the first power, one of three forces only God or the devil can bestow. With supernatural forces behind him, he can now appear in anybody, anywhere, at any time. Logan and the beautiful psychic Tess, who is helping the police watch in horror as this unstoppable entity grows stronger with each murder committed. And that is the first power. All right, so we're going to break down all the powers. One of the powers, I think, is the ability to power a a ceiling fan. (laughs) I think that's power number five. I'd like to see a whole movie about that. Um, Let's get into it right away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Massachusetts own Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerk? What's up, Boston? How we doing, Medva? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Jason, the first power is a movie. Jesus Christ. (laughs) You're welcome, Boston. Where I really wanted it to be... Good? Yes. It's amazing. Twelve years in, you still have hope. I do. That has been wrung out of me. I was like, fuck. (laughs) No. What is this? Lou Diamond Phillips, poor LDP, is just trying his best in this turkey, and I uh, couldn't make heads or tails out of it. I, I have some things to say about Zoinks. LDP. Let's bring out our next co-host. She has a lot to say about Satan and hairstyles and so much more. Please welcome June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I... I similarly... Well, I don't know that I had hope, but when I watched this movie, I thought, wow, there's still more work for us to do out there. (laughs) It's true. You know, because I, I don't know how we haven't done this movie yet. I had never seen it in the video stores, so this was a... I was coming to this with very fresh eyes. Again, this movie is 1990, 
I'm it shocked feels at that. Like First of all, too. yes. If, if you had told me this was 1983, yes. I would have been absolutely yes. It feels like a mid '80s, like a real weird mid '80s. But this came out in the theater. This movie not only came out in the theater, but tested so well. What? It tested. <laughs> they brought it to audiences, and it tested so well. In Boston. Did Apparently, Boston right outside. Make this happen. Right outside of Boston. They brought it to a theater in Medford, and Medford, and it tested so well that producers spent millions of dollars to add a brand new ending because they're like, you know what? Oh, people the, love this. Like the cliffhanger and ending, you mean? The cliffhanger yeah. and the entire water sequence at the end was oh. all added because they're like, we. This movie deserves this movie, more money. Hang on. This movie used to end not at the water treatment plant? Nope. I think it used... Yeah, I think it probably ended... I guess it ended in that room before... Well, no, yeah. that was at the water that treatment plant. That was at the water plant. It ended originally in a warehouse. There are wow. pictures of an, yet another this, warehouse. This movie loves warehouses and underground water industrial facilities. This movie takes place so much around where we live that I found myself pausing it just to be like, oh, is that where I live? Did yeah. I get my hair cut? I've been like, oh, I've walked by that reservoir. <laughs> now, listen, we, I mean, I, I grew up Catholic, recovering now, obviously. But I, grew, you know, I don't remember these powers. Well, I was going to, I mean. I'm so glad you said that because I also did not know anything about the powers being described in the movie, nor does it seem any of the characters in the movie know. It's not until the undercover agent arrives. Yes. And she is the one who explains it. She arrives easily at the end of Act Two. Well, she's at the beginning of the movie. At the right. very beginning of the movie, she shows up um, to a bunch of priests and maybe a cardinal. Yes. And says that she knows something's afoot. And she asks, A bunch of priests and maybe a cardinal. I think that I was a... I, I think there was a whole scandal in Boston based around that exact setup of gentlemen. <laughs> Michael Keaton starred in the movie adaptation. He brought him down. And she Search says... Line. She says something's going Spotlight. on. And it's time and we have to... And we need to bring out the big guns or that special cross... Um, and nobody listens to her. Well, they say, if we're to talk about Satanism, we're going to end up on Geraldo or something like that. They say but Geraldo. Even, is or, that at the beginning? Or, or they yes. do say Geraldo. Is that the beginning? Okay. That's at so the very, very beginning. beginning. That's her. But these powers, immortality is power one. Power two is knowing the future. Power three is the ability to take over people's bodies. He has power three. But I'm like... Did God also have these powers? Because Only they go, Jesus Christ. She says an undercover agent at the end when she produces the crucifix knife. Right. Badass. <laughs> By the way, have that in the whole movie. Lou Diamond Phillips, LDP, unfortunately in the movie has to spend the entirety of it being like, I don't believe this. I don't, I don't agree with this. This isn't happening. And so that makes the movie feel really difficult to go through because he's being dumb. Well, he's and when she produces like, the thing with the crucifix and crucified Jesus, she says he's the only person who had all three of the powers. But is that something, as somebody who went to Catholic school, I am confused. I never remember the stories of Jesus possessing people's bodies <laughs> or Jesus knowing the future. He wasn't like, um, no. Uh, water will turn into wine. Just give me a sec. You know, it's like, there wasn't like those were the things that we learned. He did say to Lazarus before Lazarus died, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say this, that this movie does work in a world in which everyone has amnesia about the scene right before. That's right. Because an, the, evidence, an evidence that's gathered is not important to Lou Diamond Phillips at all. He, it's so hard. He has a tough job because he, even though he's cracked, I think th the last three serial killers... Within, five, June. I'm sorry, five serial this killers guy is within kill, three... By killing them all, within, I believe. Or capturing them all within, within three years. 
I, I wrote that statistic down because I was like, okay, wait, there's, there have been multiple, I guess, five active serial killers in Los Angeles. It's L.A., baby. Yeah. It is. That is the, wow. part of the, that's the part of the movie that I believed the most. <laughs> I was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure this is true for right now. He has such a tough job because he has to sort of buddy cop up with this wealthy psychic. We'll get into that. I want, I want to reserve about an hour's time to talk about her business. Oh, Tess? Oh. I, I wish this movie about, was about Tess more than anybody else. I, I want to talk about the digital platform. Yeah. Oh, her that digital she platform. Has. The, yes, the for, for doing star chats and or star, star chat, signs and charts. Yes, there's sports, there's Wall Street. Oh, my God. So she's weighing in. It is a sort of like, it's a 360 type of you know, psychic network, but so I want to, I truly want to reserve an She hour. also lives in an iconic modern, she lives in like uh, the Stahl house, which is like a famous, <laughs> it's one of the case study houses. It's an insane, the idea that she would own that house means she must be the biggest psychic in the world. But, but Jason, the biggest psychic in the world right now working today is, I don't know. Tyler Henry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Actually. that came so quick, and it's and it's a name I've never heard. Oh, he's he's wonderful, Paul, and I love him. We saw him Wait, live. What? We saw a live show. Yeah, we love him. You saw a live show? No shade, because you fucking morons came to this. <laughs> you saw a live show of a psychic? Does he do That's like right. the hits? He does do live readings. Wow! Wow! Yeah, it, was it was impressive. Wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> I want to get into the psychic too, but I want to just step back and just embrace LDP because he has a tough job and that might explain why he does not look comfortable smoking a cigarette at any point in this movie because he holds a cigarette like a child would hold, like he's holding it like daintily, like it should have like, a little... Like, so it doesn't burn him, maybe. Yes. And he's always smoking it. It's like, uh, it's new yet, put all the fingers up like he's drinking a glass of tea. And, and it's always hanging. It, the cigarette work here is it's, magnificent. But I did think to myself, because I also thought he looked so young. He looks like he's just a babe, a newborn fawn. And I think the cigarette He's 17. Work, I do think he was like, I, I got to have my cigarettes. I got to have my long coat. And I gotta have my cigarettes. Because if well, I don't have those, I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna seem like an established detective who's captured or killed five serial killers I mean, in the last three he years. He doesn't seem prolific. hardened. He doesn't seem hardened at all. No, he should be like, it, he basically should be Raylan Givens from Justified. Yeah. Or, or Bosch. You know what I mean? Like, but I knew you were going to bring Bosch up. Of course I'm going to bring Bosch up. It was only up. a matter of time. You can't talk about a Hollywood homicide without talking about Bosch. Great. Everybody, the rest of the show, we're talking Bosch. <laughs> and the tough job he has, though, is that he is uncovering, he's working with this psychic and this very wealthy psychic, and he's so mad at her. <laughs> he's so mad. But he's, he's mad at her. Mad. He's mad at her for exp experiencing the same things that he is going through. He sees that's, yeah, crazy shit. I guess that's maybe why he's mad. He, he thinks, I mean, and I understand why he at first would think she's sure. a part of it. She's been calling him and telling him information that has actually led to actionable, you know, uh, uh, catching the guy or almost catching, all this stuff. So he knows she knows something, but he, for, I'm going to say, 50 full minutes, yes. he spends the time shaking her violently. <laughs> Yes. And threatening her when he himself is having hallucinations. Yes. He, this, I mean. He makes fun of her hallucinations. Like, <laughs> there's no one there, dummy. <laughs> but wait, in the scene before, you experience the same fucking thing. Wow. He's I, like, oh, well, well, we're going to go to his house where he grew up? I'm like, buddy. <laughs> well, let's, I, I also. It's like, why of, wouldn't they have done that to begin with? That would have, that should have been where they started. They're a terrible police officers. And at one point, he especially, LDP, is struggling throughout. And at one point, Tess does a great job of calling him out on it and is like, what, do you want to just pull your gun out? 
Because all he does all he is does. Pull, put his gun on anybody, <laughs> anywhere. At every point, In at point church. blank range, he misses people at point blank range 90% of the time. Does he ever get a shot no. off? Yeah. Don't think yeah. so. He does, at the, he does oh. but it's unsuccessful. Uh, boy... Do I and I love Jeff Korber, who's the the main baddie. Yes, he's amazing. But and, and like one of the great villain faces of cinema. Why did they need to put him in a mask? Because uh, when he took off that mask, I'm like, is that a mask of his own face? I thought that too. Which, by the way, I love. I love. I his thought face. it was. I at just, first, it felt too similar. It was yeah. like it was too like at least. Somebody should have been like, hey, oh we should, bought this God. mask before we cast him, and I feel like now oh it's not working. God. We should make masks of our faces. <laughs> um, I, thought that, <laughs> I thought that in the opening scene, or not the opening scene, but one of the early scenes, where he takes the mask off himself and puts it on the woman Cru- on the one ground. One of the creepier Chilling. things I've ever seen. Chilling. But my favorite character beyond all was the homeless woman who is... Oh. Jumping up, and that's the only person that Lou Diamond Phillips successfully shoots. Well, by the way, that woman is amazing. Incredible. I I call her Carol Kane. Um, Great. And I want to play that moment where Lou Diamond Phillips and the second woman are about to go to the bone zone. I want the whole movie to be her as the bad. And when when she pops up, take a look at this. She's one of our best. This is what the movie's been building to. This romantic kiss, we finally get it, and then... <laughs> what is he here? But, like, they go back to kissing now. He should, at this point in the movie, any noise off screen is the murderer. <laughs> Why does he have to I leave? I He's gonna, I think he's going to go investigate the noise, isn't he? Maybe it's his cat that never came back? He thinks it's an old refrigerator. The cat with the pearl necklace? Dun, dun, dun! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Why Robin... Why did she go back down? This looks like... Yeah! Russia! Uh-oh! What is it? This is a classic lady, moment. She was outside the window. And he doesn't believe it. His gun is out, by the way. Always. His always. gun is always out. Even when he thought it was the refrigerator, he took it out. Yes, there's nothing out there. <laughs> Don't you think I look pretty, Logan? <laughs> Incredible. That- Incre- the movie comes alive with it's this like, performance. It's like Carol Kane meets the Wicked Witch of the West. But dressed it's- as Robin Williams from The Fisher King. <laughs> and I have to say that this movie's stunts are amazing. We'll talk about those. But June, I want to just pull out what you just said. He pulled out his gun to check on an old refrigerator. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to shoot that refrigerator. And I'm going to bet that if he made it to the kitchen, he would miss at Point Blank Rage. And well, again, I will say, he has a cat named Jack. Okay. Wouldn't you be like, oh, it's my cat. My cat knocked something over or I don't whatever. like the cat way... Cat never comes back, by the way. No. The cat comes back a couple of times, but I don't like the introduction to LDP. Me neither. Is we're watching a cat gnaw at pizza. No, I didn't like it either. And I'm like, oh, this is the serial killer's apartment. Of course. And then I'm like, oh, it's our hero's apartment? I didn't know what we were supposed to make of that because I was like, oh, is he taking care of that cat? And and I don't even like cats. And I was like, the whole movie I was worried about that cat. And that that cat wasn't being fed and that cat wasn't being taken care of. And then I'm also like, why is he so messy? Like, like, and he even apologizes well, cub- it's, when they go to the apartment. He apologizes that because it's so messy, and it is. It's disgusting. His whole apartment situation did not g- mesh with his reputation as well, the best police, the best homicide detective in Los Angeles. I'm gonna go one step at 27 first. years old. 
I'm going to go one step further and say this. I like Lou Diamond Phillips, but there's no personality to this cop. Like, I don't know who the fuck. Is he funny? Is he, is oh, he angry? He smokes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't put a finger on it. Like, no, he has no of... defining traits. None of, none of the people in the movie have, like, a personality or have, a, have characteristics that make them unique. They are all, like, just truly... Man. Like, yeah, two, woman. Th- yes. Scene. <laughs> it literally, like, the guy who works in the water treatment plant has just as much character development as... Well, no, I think the the person who, and this is so fucking crazy, and this is what's wrong with the movie, is like the person who had, in some ways, the most humanity was the serial killer himself. Where I was like, oh, you've experienced this childhood trauma. You are this way. I hope you get healed. And I am am connected to his journey way more than I am to our billionaire psychic. I'll say, I'll say this. I wanted him to get away with it. He give him, did. Give him That's all the That's the end of the movie. I, I do think he, did. he did get away I with think it. He did. There's right. a sequel Good. potentially. Like they that's the problem with this movie. I don't understand what it is. Right? He catches a serial killer, don't put him on death row. They put him on death row. Then he's able to jump around, but it makes no sense because sometimes he jumps into people's bodies and he be, doesn't like control their bodies. Yep. He just becomes but, them. But then he doesn't jump into the bag lady's body. No. And I don't know if he was like, she's, she's got to work on her own. <laughs> you know, she's so good that I got to send her out there on her own. But then the bag lady is in the apartment, but then immediately in the backseat of the car. And even if she jumped out that window, I think they would have seen her sneak he, into the back seat. He appears to be able to, whether as his own corporeal form or when he has possessed another person, he seems to be able to teleport willy-nilly. And forgive me, this might be in there and I just didn't clock it, but it seemed very clear to me at the very beginning that um, Lou Diamond Phillips had been like possessed or part of the killer's spirit had gone over to him they have a moment where they close in on both of their eyes right and there's a moment where there's a music cue and i was like oh for the rest of the movie lou diamond phillips is going to be in a a fugue state committing the murders that he himself that he himself is now investigating but he doesn't know right did other people think that but But that's not what the movie's about is it no no better movie though but oh. now here's what I'll, I'll say to you. If the serial killer wanted to get captured, wanted to be put on death row or be killed, and I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if he needed to be killed on death row, whatever, it happened very quickly. But if he wanted to be killed, why is he then avenging his death with the cops? Just go off and start killing other people. Like, they helped you out. Technically, It would have made more sense if um, the first act of the movie established a rivalry a la Dr. Richard Kimball and um, Tommy Lee Jones and The Fugitive where they are cat and mouse in each other and finally Lou Diamond Phillips gets him so that now he's being haunted for the rest of the movie or tortured and that the killer is making it personal. Right? And right. That's what's missing. I mean, I think that, you know, the there's a con- lot missing. The connective, <laughs> that's the only thing I can see. The connective tissue between the killer story and, like, I thought, oh, it would be great if Lou Diamond's father, who had been killed in a bar randomly, had been a cop who, like, turned the other way and didn't, you know, investigate what we knew was going on in our killer's family or something, Ooh. anything. But we are, those stories are just so disparate. Yeah. And um, it just, there, there's some major holes. Wait, but also the, the psychic does something we don't really see until she goes to the house to go to his bedroom with the creepy clown portraits. She is the voice of him, the killer, no. In the room. Well, no, she's the voice no. of the killer's mother. No, and, no, like, and no. him. And oh, him. and him. I'm and sorry. Him. I'm he's sorry. like, Grandpa, but no. But see, here's... Yeah. Don't say that again, Paul. 
That's the shirt. <laughs> it is. Yeah. By the way, that is the shirt. With a creepy clown on it. The Just like the clowns that used to drive around the haunt in a van Wait, and try so to kidnap thing, kids. I also... You guys Paul, get it. You're the only people that get it. Here's what I couldn't understand, though, to your earlier point, is why are none... Sister Marguerite says that, and also the psychic, they don't want the killer to be on death row and they don't want the state to be responsible for killing him. And I guess my question is why? Because I think this is my conjecture. Okay. I think that the movie wants, I don't think they do a good job setting this up, but I think the movie wants you to believe that by killing him, you will be giving him the third power. Yes. Right? Or the, has, first, the first power. Well, oh the God. first power, right. resurrection. The third power. First we, the, resurrection, the, you said? The first one is Which resurrection. Which is what it is. So the I think third I, power is taking over. So that would be He's why. already doing that. No, no. Oh. The gas chamber gives him the third power. And then if he kills the psychic, he gets the second power. I don't know if he just adopts power. But so wait, I, does he ever what? have all three powers? No, they're trying to get him to stop him before he gets the well, first Okay, power. so in the Bible, in the Book of Powers... Yes. <laughs> the, the Great Stars <laughs> the series. The Great as, Book as, of Powers. As a religion major from Middlebury College, um, when Lou Diamond Phillips wakes up from his dream, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, there are roses beside him in the bed? Yes. No, I didn't see that. Why? What's that, that story? That's exactly the kind of detail that's in the movie that I'm like, something interesting is happening here, but the movie's no like, why. nah, who cares? I, who cares I that believe... there are rose, three roses on the pillow next to him? I believe that those roses were placed there From by the, the same person who held the cat off screen and on action threw it at Lou Diamond Phillips. Because where is that cat jumping from? It's a pretty open floor plan. There's no shelving anywhere near him. But um, are you, okay, so are, are, we, are we to understand that you can only get power two and power three after you have power one, or well, you start off with power three? This is, this well, is what the psychic have, says. Have, yeah, go ahead. All right, here we go. Sexy psychic phone call. <laughs> Listen, lady. The marks are always exactly six inches in diameter. The wound is always at the center. Keep going. Oh, this is sexy, actually. Keep going. Uh. Okay, whatever you say. Swear it. You got it. Uh. What's your name? Near Sunset Boulevard. The south entrance to Elysian Park. When? Soon. Don't forget your promise, Logan. I, oh, amazing. Oh, this is so funny, by the way. When there, he tries to draw it. There are so many killings. <laughs> there are, like, that is a road trip. That is 16 killings. Uh-oh. Right into lens. Right down the barrel. So oh, I, I believe shit. that he is such a disciple of Satan that he knows if he is killed, he will immediately get the third power because he's a good little devil boy. And I don't know how he'll get the other ones, but he will. Wow, I didn't understand that from watching the movie, that we I were trying even, to collect power. It's clearly what's at stake. He, that's, I feel I like, didn't why that. he is joyfully taunting them into giving him the death penalty. Mm. And, like, the courthouse steps now I understand. Well, that's yeah. why, And that's why he kidnaps the psychic, I think, to take her powers to suck him out. That's hard, though, because he's also killing so many other people. C huh. He's getting revenge. Oh, let me tell you something else, too. Who's he getting revenge on? All the cops that gave him what he wanted. <laughs> um, because the other part of this is, um, as somebody who grew up with horses, let me tell you this. Here we go. Play. Oh, you think you're better than us with your horses? <laughs> Do not fire a gun in the proximity of a horse if you want them to calm down. Like when the horse is stomping on that detective, brump, brump, brump with those hoofs, don't fire a gun that's only going to intensify the stomping. Now, uh, I know you were in a horse accident. Did you shoot at a horse when that happened? 
We did have guns and we did have horses. And what? We did... <laughs> did you grow up cowboy style? <laughs> Wait, were you a Long Island Yellowstone? We had a ranch. The Dutton? The Dutton Long ranch. Island. I no, thought yeah. I... Okay, so I was very disturbed by that horse scene. So, and, and I guess this is what I couldn't tell. Did our killer possess the horse? Okay. Well, I, so well, not the rider. I think it was the rider. Because then know. he jumps out of the thing, runs up the steps, and Lou Diamond Phillips chases him, the driver of the carriage, and he's saying, come on, uh, I know, buddy but boy. There or... were times when we were close up on that horse and that there was a striking resemblance. Well, then, well, well, the then horse... if I'm the killer, I'm fucking porting myself straight into Jack the Cat and I'm fucking slicing and dicing LDP's neck. I will say that, June, you probably are confused because that horse is wearing blinders, but blinders is technically not a mask. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> The horse takes off his blinders and puts it on the cop. <laughs> bah, bah. When, now, he, here's, in here's what scene, I'll say about that scene, though. He jumps into somebody else. Lou Diamond Phillips, they chase, they chase. They do this amazing stunt where he jumps off the building and then runs away. But if he's possessing someone's body, just kill that person. Splat. That's what's so hard. That's what's so tough about oh, this movie. Oh, because he does, he has to have like a really good, it was a cool a by the stunt, way, totally by the way. real great, stunt. Great stunt. Loved it. And All then, done in camera. And then he gets to have like a cheeky moment where he waves goodbye like, see you soon. <laughs> but imagine wanna... if the whole movie, instead of him, it was the bag lady. <laughs> <laughs> Carol came from Scrooge. Um, Simka. What a performance, just to go back to her for a second. What a performance. Oh, yeah. You know? Incredible. Yeah, and she I, really left it all on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Why was the nun in, like, nun jail? Yeah. They go to visit the nun, who looks like they live in The Rock's house. It's like, hold on, buzz, we'll buzz you into the nunnery, and, like, a gate opens, and they pull up, like, a driveway that, like, the dude from Entourage would live at, and... They pull in, like, oh, the nun, she's down here in this little room. And they talk through, like, a sliding, like a sliding door prison. Again, so much of this, this is a real, because we haven't said it yet, like, to me, this is a real, a movie that is genuinely part of, like, the satanic panic era of, like, um, uh, uh, yeah, give it up for satanic <laughs> panic, everybody. Yeah. Um, the idea that, like, our kids were being indoctrinated into, the, into devil worship by heavy metal music and so forth. And... <laughs> yeah! Boston fucking animals. Um, but, but there's this whole idea that, like, oh, somehow this person, the upside-down pentagram, the devil, all this stuff... Lou Diamond Phillips is so oblivious that even when he goes to church... Because first he goes to church, before they go to the nunnery, he goes to church, goes into the confession booth, and has a whole conversation with a priest who turns out to be the killer. Yes! And then when he goes around, it's just empty. And nowhere, and even when they try and go to the nunnery, no, they seem genuinely disinterested in engaging seemingly the only people who can treat this scourge, which is the nuns, the priests, and their special crucifix daggers. The movie should be about them. Well, they seem to be the keeper of the special crucifix dagger, which... So everything Tess and Lou Diamond Phillips are doing are moot right. until these people get involved. Yeah, because Tess is, is... Yeah, she has no real... She has powers to sort of intuit what's going on, but she can't do anything about it. No, it's the curse. Well, she, right. her powers are suspect because... You think? Well, she does say that thing. Well, she's able to figure out a cop tailing her, but she doesn't know why the cop is tailing her. So if she was psychic, she'd be like, you're tailing me because Lou Diamond Phillips told you to tail me. She's like, I don't know why you're following me, but go on an online well, dating. Well, you've seen, you've seen Tyler she does, Henry's work. He just gets hits and he gets symbols and then he's right. like, I don't know how to believe put it that's a real person. <laughs> Tyler Henry's a gifted young man. He's wonderful. Paul, I love him. Um, but 
the other thing that it, the, I will agree, though, the thing that is suspect about her is that she has no idea that two cops are in her home rifling through her belongings and her answering machine. She walks in shock. She was stunned. And I did think, huh, you should have gotten some sort of a message about this. Especially, also, especially on the walk up to your apartment when there's a police yeah. car parked out front. And there should the, be picking. The house is top to bottom glass. And they're just in yeah. there. You could see them these... from the gate. It's like Bosch's house, actually. But at the same time, at the same time, again, I just want to break down what, what this guy can do because he leaves a message on her answering machine which he can rewind. Then it's not there, which I get. But I also am like, do I get it? Well, because this is... This is part of the movie's problem, which is Lou Diamond Phillips is collecting scene after scene experiences that are truly unexplainable that must key him into something supernatural is happening, and he refuses to even consider that that's what's happening. Well, at that point, he's still a little, like, suspect of everything. But so much has happened. His so partner is, oh no, his partner hasn't been trampled. Oh yeah, he has been trampled by now. No, his partner at not that point trampled yet? has okay. not been trampled. Why don't trampled. you just do this? What, if I'm like, all right, so I'm Michael T. Williamson, and I'm just like sitting next to Lou Diamond Phillips. I'm like, hey, <laughs> just blow off my own head. I possess my own body. That would be it. Like, why does he go out of the way to possess the horse? Why can't he just possess Michael T. Williamson Make Michael T. Williams to pick up a gun, shoot himself in the head, and be done with it. I don't know that he can possess dead bodies. Wait, you, wait, wait, no. you mean, I think Paul's saying when he's alive. Oh, when he's alive. Wait, kill him, get him to kill himself, not get him to kill Lou Diamond Like, why, why all the pomp and circumstance? Just have him it's just jump as, into one of, like... I think it's not as cinematic. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, the person that I was waiting to get jumped into was the hot dog vendor. Okay, another remarkable performance. I laughed out loud. What was the line? He said, oh, she's just come out of a mental hospital. And he said... Maybe she should go back. <laughs> I had a genuine LOL. That's how I genuine. felt when um, the killer, you mentioned it earlier, Paul, pulls the ceiling fan out of the ceiling and then uses it as a chopping weapon. It felt like a Freddy Krueger move yeah. that he was going to be like, I'm a big fan, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the movie does go for a couple comedic beats, and I do think they <laughs> land the plane. Like, there's the beat with the hot dog vendor, and then there's also the beat in the hotel, the, the Hotel of Misfits, where... where... I they have this bolded into, and underlined. They bust into a hotel room and the killer's after them. And then they move a bed close to the door to stop him from coming in. And there's a gentleman asleep in it. And he does not wake and nope. they do not attempt to save him. No. But they don't no. attempt to save this poor man living again, in a flop house in downtown L.A. And Lou Diamond Phillips is a cop, like, to serve and protect, and he does not make any He's attempt running. to save this Well, civilian. I wrote here, LDP is so dumb, question mark, and afraid, and it's making him a bad cop. Okay, a question about LDP, and I, this is a serious question I want to ask the audience, too. Okay, is the serial killer possessing the body and then making LDP see his face on their body? Like, so, okay, so, okay. So if, if I was walking by, I would see LDP fighting the police chief. Okay. Okay, but then why does that You know that what, don't act like you knew that and we yeah. didn't. You guys are getting yeah. a real fucking bullshit on so us. But then why does that man in the hotel lobby seem to also, the, in, the, the one that's sitting there in the Who's lobby, like, he's like, points. but I what, is, for that what part. is he seeing? He saw, he saw a priest run up those stairs because a priest uh. jumped out the window. 
Everyone's jumping out of windows in this movie. Everyone. Everyone. They, they this had a movie, fastest way to get out. This movie is 98% about defenestration. <laughs> I guess I just want to go back to whose body he jumps in at what point because... Whose body? Lou's body. <laughs> when, the, when he jumps out... When he jumps out the window and lands on the car and Lou Diamond Phillips gets in the car with that man. Okay, that man just... Sorry, Paul. Yes. So what that man says, I rewound, I, wa- I watched 10 times in a row. That man is so shocked that LDP jumps in the car with the psychic and, and says, hey, 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 I'm not, I'm not anti-cop. And right. If, and I'll help and you the, find the creep. And Lou Diamond Phillips not in police clothes. Why does he... Or, but, or knowing what's going on in the city. <laughs> Why would he tell him he's not anti-cop? Because I think he didn't want to be like, hey, look, you can take my... I don't want you to take my car, but it's not because I'm anti-cop. I, oh. I just got it cleaned or whatever his yeah. issue was. And but, then they proceed to demolish his car... Like they're, it, like they're in a demolition derby. They drive it through a dumpster with a side hatch? Like, I've ne- like a dumpster that has like a secret exit. While the bad guy is hanging on to the car, like throughout, they're trying to knock him off. But the bad guy, this is what I'm talking about, the bad guy should just jump in the anti-cop guy. I agree. Well, the, the bad guy, at any point, could exact his complete revenge by jumping into... Lou Diamond Phillips or Tess. Yeah. And just, there are so, the movie doesn't add up because I don't know ultimately what the bad guy wants. Yes. Yeah. Full stop. I don't know what his plan is, nor does the end shine any light on it. I'm okay in the movie to be like, I'm not sure what he's up to, but I bet it's bad because he's doing a bunch of bad stuff. And then at the end, it's like, oh, okay. He was trying to unlock this thing and blah, blah, blah. Maybe his, I don't know. Thought, like, maybe his thought was, I got to kill Tess, and if I give them enough clues, they'll eventually get to Marguerite. Marguerite will have that knife, Such and then I will get road. that. It is a long Such road. Such a long road. I mean, because he should have said, go to the nun's house, brother. You know, and like I, he should have been I, like, kept, I kept feeling like I also, buddy. for a while, thought, is the nun related somehow? Is I the nun so his too. mother? Is the, oh. I thought that for a while. I was trying so hard to make sense of the movies, like uh, all the characters well, such that they were in relation to each yes. other, somehow lined up eventually. First and that's all, not what the movie's interested in. Amazing wow. performance by the killer's mother in his, or oh grandmother, my God. grandmother rather. Sorry, it's dark in here, my eyes. What a wonderful performance. I was, I was very confused because for most of the movie, I thought, that that phone call and those sexy lips were, and I'm, I'm scared to even say this, but I, I'm going to be brave right now and admit that I thought that those sexy lips and sexy phone call were from Sister Marguerite. So, and cool. then I was like, and then I was like trying to remember what Sister Marguerite looked like. And I was like, is that the psychic? Because we didn't see her. We didn't see her hair, and I thought they were going to save the reveal of that shock of red hair for later on. That would have been so cool. I would have really enjoyed that. But it is Tess who says, you know, I've heard about somebody. Where? Where Where? did Tess hear about? Tess is a psychic. Just be like, I'm getting a feeling we should go there. Like, why? Where in what? Did Tyler Henry be like, you know, there's a nun. Well, Tess well is... Jason, first of all, <laughs> yes, Tyler Henry has been a part of some difficult cases and has had hits. And by the way, Moby didn't believe in any of that sort of stuff, and Tyler Henry convinced him. So here's the thing. Um, I'll say this. Moby? Uh, Moby. I'm, I'm double out now. So now, and then sometimes Tyler Henry will show up to somebody and be like, I don't have anything. And they're like, okay, cool, thanks. Um, That's why I really believe him. Me too. He's not afraid to be like, I got nothing for you. Um, just like <laughs> Jeff Probst. So, um, Boston Rob. <laughs> 20, 20 seasons ago. Uh, 
<laughs> that did 20. not go as well, I feel like, as you wanted it to. Boston's no, not going to give it up I for that. I have not watched Survivor. June and I now... June and I just started watching Survivor, the TV <laughs> show, and it's 45th season. And we have gone backwards, and now all we do is watch Survivor with our kids. And I feel Boston Rob is just alive as he... I mean, he's alive. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. He's very much alive. I follow him on Instagram. Uh, but sounds uh, like that sounds like a threat. <laughs> uh, wait, oh, you were talking about the humor of this movie, and I think Tess is just too low key because there's a she delivers a lot of jokes without any spin. Because at one point he's like, "Well, you're psychic. How'd you know my number?" And she's like, "I had a friend at the phone company." <laughs> And that was a funny, like, like, she's like, well, that, I had a friend at the phone company. She delivers it with no, like, it's just like, well, I had a friend at the phone company. It's, it's like, <laughs> it, like, it, like, I don't you know. You were they, unfortunately gi- giving it more comedy than it had in the well, movie. I, but I also think, like, Lou Diamond Phillips was like, hey, um, the cops will pay for that. I'm like, is that a joke? You're saying it in a way that I'm like, are the cops going to pay for that? And he's like, actually, the, detect- the lieutenant will pay for it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Is that a jo- again? Is this a joke? I don't think that. So, so I actually thought about that for a while. The fact that he pinned he because he not only says Lieutenant Grimes is going to pay for it, but he's going to say he's going to personally pay yeah. for it. And, and then, I'm like, this lieutenant, like he just was put on this case and by the higher alert, up. Lord, he's about to be dead. That's right. This and guy also- never getting that car paid for. It. <laughs> by because the way, the guy he's calling a guy who's fucking dead. So, by the way, our enemy besides our serial killer is this lieutenant who is very level-headed he's like motherfucker four more people have died you're off the case it's not like oh he's also like crazy it's like no no it's clearly not working he's also like you broke into the psychic's house kidnapped her brought her to a crime scene like he, he, he and lou diamond phillips is legitimately not a good he's not even a good cop who plays by his own rules, Bosch, but he's a bad cop who doesn't play by rules at all and is just lost. He's like, a, it's like they gave a badge to a little kid and were like, go fix it. And he's just like, well, my gun is the answer to every problem well, this in this. Movie, this movie is written by a little kid because the cigarettes, the I champagne. Would believe that. Because like, at one point when they go to the bar and she's like, listen up, McGuire. There must be a leak in your ceiling because this is watered down scotch. And I love the guys like, I'm not McGuire. <laughs> like, like that to me. <laughs> like I feel like she just knew the name of the bar was McGuire's, and she's like, Well, that must be you must be the proprietor. But again, the proprietor, she... Mr. McGuire. <laughs> but again, right, it's like assuming a salesperson is Macy's. Listen up, Macy's themselves. What's so strange is, like, she's a psychic. She would know he's not McGuire. Yeah. She'd also know that that was watered down before she even tasted it. But then she (laughs) took the bottle with her. Or she took another bottle. But why wouldn't that one be watered down, too? It seems like if that's I think she was saying, like, they're all watered down, but at least I'm going to get a bottle's worth. Like, to get the drink I want, I have to drink this entire bottle. I would love it if the movie had an eight-minute, they're absolutely wasted scene. <laughs> the movie's not interested in having fun at all. Like, zero. If the, if the guy was more... If the bad guy was more like Freddy Krueger, he's already doing incredible work, let me be clear. But if it was a little bit more... If, if Lou Diamond Phillips and Tess had... If Tess even was less of a sultry... I don't know. Less of a sultry psychic and more of a kooky psychic that he was saddled with... That, that dynamic would be funny. Or if he was capable even remotely, then we've got something. But yeah. everybody in the movie is not good at the thing they're supposed to be the best at. No. I, I, but you know what? I am interested in that computer site that she's building. Let's go to the audience <laughs> and I chat with them. I also want to know, why does every water filtration um, facility have an acid bath? Such that you could create the Joker in it? Okay, so I thought for sure what they were going to do was create holy water and then throw him in it. I love that. I love that. But no, Paul is just rifling through papers over there. 
Well, I'm going out to the audience because I have a couple of things from our Discord, so I want to make sure that people in the Discord might be a, get a chance to have their voice heard. But you, you had your hand raised, right? Or, okay. Um, all right, so your name and your question. My name is Ben, and my big question is, why is anyone running from anything when someone can just transport to another person in front of them? Why run yeah. at all? Right. There's a lot. There's so much. Ru- I would say if you put it all together, maybe we can have Avril do a, a supercut. If you put it all together, I believe there's 45 minutes of just running. Okay. I will say this. The original title of this movie was Transit. Oh. Why? Because he's transiting or like he's like moving around. And then they decided to call it So First you're Power. telling me the movie in its initial <laughs> initial version of it had nothing to do with the power? It did, but it was more about the body moving in transit. Move. No thanks. I will say, I want to say, nope. Paul, just quickly, something positive about the movie. I do think it, it is always a nice... Um, it's a relief when... Filmmakers set their movies and stories in L.A. and don't take on Hollywood. And boy, this movie didn't. There is no <laughs> reference to L.A. being an industry town, which Uh-oh, is... Uh-oh, June, hold up. Because Tess does say... Except I'm used to telling yes. people if their pilots get picked up oh, or not. Oh, funny. And I thought that was a great... I was like, oh, that, that would be a great person to chat with. When we're not I also distressed. would have That's loved true. it if Lou Diamond Phillips ever called for backup or even had a radio. <laughs> no radio? Oh, the only all? time the only time the radio is used is when the Satan person calls Lou Diamond Phillips radio to say Lou Diamond Phillips is going to get killed. Yeah. <laughs> your name and your question. Uh, my name is John, and um, in America, the average time between conviction. And the death sentence is uh, 12 years. And in California, it's actually close to 20 years. Uh, so are we supposed to believe that uh, LDP just aged very gracefully? Uh, I believe this movie posits a world in which it was like the trial was a day. Gun, gun, gun. At 5 o'clock, they were like guilty. By 6, he was fried. Absolutely. Yes, you're right. Yeah, because also, that's the way why it do works. you know that? You That's the way it works. When you really sir. want it to happen, it can happen very quickly. And yeah. this is why the movie is anti-death penalty. Okay. Um, your name and your question. Hi, I'm Cass. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the introduction to Tess in that parking garage. She just cuts oh, off this yeah. guy. Like this very entitled um, <laughs> rich psychic would, I guess. So I just wanted to yeah, she so thinks she's using her psychic is a terrible power. person. Is she using her psychic powers to know exactly where the parking spot is gonna be, so that she can snipe it? I didn't know what we were to make of that. Yeah, I think that she's a dick. <laughs> I mean, right? That's kind of the energy that she's giving off. Everybody here is very cocky. Like at Boston, one point, I agree. <laughs> but there's one point. Look at them cheering for it. There's one point in the movie where Tess says, I saw you celebrating on TV that he got the death penalty. What interview was that? Yeah. Like, I think they had she a was, live... I think it was he, so strange, because in that moment, it felt like she had seen the movie. I was going to say, I think, she, yeah. I think she had seen dailies from the scene where they're celebrating the police precinct. All right, your name and your question. <laughs> My name is Olivia, and I want to ask about the scene where he's supposed to be being put to, be put to death, and when he's coming out of the glass, it's definitely a stunt double coming out. <laughs> and it completely changes his face, and we actually had an argument of, was it intentional or unintentional? Oh, right. Was that a part of the psychic thing? Was he, was, did he take over somebody's body? Was but there's someone else that comes out. Like, it's not... Well, yeah, stunt double, yeah. And you're saying... His face. He's clearly someone else's face when he comes out. A stunt double, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's so noticeable. But like, for some... Yeah, like a stunt double, yeah. See, these are things... There's wait, a great joke I'm sorry. in space so I'm not about under... it. So, so we're to believe that in the making of the movie, a different person jumped out of the glass? 
<laughs> and the question therein is, is the character inhabiting the body I of mean, the stunt them? That's power number four. Power number four. I am giving That's the, the Tom Cruise the Tom Cruise power <laughs> where he just does all of his own stunts until he dies. All right. I was about to leave, but someone showed me they may have the best question because their name is Tess. We can't pass up someone. Ooh, are they psychic? We'll see. I Tess. feel like I feel like like they're in this in a room this size, there's like 30 people who think they're psychic. A little bit. By applause, like, I think are I'm a you little psychic? psychic. By applause, anyone think they're... Oh, yeah, two, see? two up here. These two, two over up here. here. Anybody like down here? Two Anybody up here. Anybody she thinks she's psychic? June thinks Raise your psychic. hand if you think you're a little bit psychic. Jason, to your right. Look at this. Oh, yeah, to my left, yes. To your left. Look at There's a lot of people. There's so many people who think they're a little bit psychic. Okay, yes, your question, Tess. So... In the beginning of the movie, when Lou Diamond Phillips is with his partner and his partner doesn't want to go out, he says, what are you scared of? Some kind of boogeyman or the Ku Klux Klan? (laughs) So my question is, in this universe, we already know that the Catholic religion is a little bit different. In this universe, is the Ku Klux Klan a fictional sort of (laughs) creature? (laughs) Yeah, they're put in the same sentence. It's a great question. Great well, it's, it's really, it's so upsetting for uh, Michael T. Williamson because it also, he's nervous. He's like, hey, what are you doing? We shouldn't be doing all this. Blah, 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 all this stuff. And then Tess says to him, you're in danger. <laughs> then Lou Diamond Phillips is like, shut up. We're going down to this place. We're going to go to this <laughs> church. We're going down here. Cut to, he gets trampled by the horse. And I desperately wanted his last line to be, not, I saw him, it was him. For him to say, I told you, (laughs) you did this. My blood is on your hands. See, my question is, why in that, why does Tess keep on pulling out some sort of medallion of the pentagram upside down as though it's a cross? Yes, and he's a vampire. Right, but it has no, it does nothing. It, 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 the, the first time she uses it, it seems to kind of dissuade him from kids. That's it. But just a little bit, nothing like, he's yeah. not like, ah, he's just kind of like, okay, okay. I thought okay. he was just the like, next what time, is this? And then the next time she holds it up, he's like, you're holding it upside down. Ah. It's like, I, oh, I, boy, did I wish he had more Freddy Krueger energy. <laughs> I will say, I love this theater. People here are lovely, but... I ran right down into the lobby. People let me run right into a janitorial closet. <laughs> I walked by four employees. They do, they do want you to clean up some puke in the balcony. Oh, I you didn't like, realize that. I was that. like, hey, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, and no one so, said And everybody word. in the lobby is like, look at this fucking idiot. Doesn't even know the schematics of the Chevalier. <laughs> Though he one... wasn't here for the Doughboys. He didn't see Frailbot here or Wu Tang. The the one funny moment of Dano. that. Dano. Was I ran out and Micus. The... Sorry. Jay Leno in 1989. Um, I ran out into the lobby, and there's clearly somebody who is here at the show and goes, Oh, you're the dude from TV. <laughs> To which, wow, I have what? a lot of questions. Wow, clearly an audience member. Wait, were you? He in was the, at the bar. Were you in the balcony? I came down. I was in the where the liquor was. Because that wouldn't surprise me from the balcony. These people but, are fucking morons. Oh man, I like that I surprised him. I surprised. You're, you're the, the dude from TV. from TV. I love that he's Is like. There, what have you been up to lately? <laughs> Hey, hey, hold that thought. I got to go watch this show with a dude from TV I know. Yeah, I'm watching this show. It sucks. Is there another show after this one? Ah, uh, can I get you guys? Can I get two more 40s? Can Truly I get a selfless. couple more tall boys? Well, clearly we had opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for second opinions. I thought Jesus only could do simple things. <laughs> like walk on water, heal the blind and sick. But then this movie taught me he possesses too. 
He can see the future, so can you. Sister Marguerite made me a believer. Not a trace of doubt in my mind. Bag lady spins. Ooh, I'm a believer. See you later, buddy boy. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. <laughs> Damn, Dan, and she's Kendall. She's Amazing. running away. She fled. You did a great job. That was awesome. Great work, you guys. So, not surprisingly, this movie has very high five-star review rating. Seventy-eight percent of the reviews are five-star reviews. Seventy-eight percent. Okay. Um, only 5% are one star. And this first one is from Kim. She writes, Entertainment! <laughs> the title, It's Very Scary. Five stars. <laughs> I like this one from Ivan, who writes this. <laughs> Anyone looking for an early 90s action thriller featuring Lou Diamond Phillips will not be disappointed. <laughs> Five stars. How often, how often Listen. are you just like flipping through being like, oh, Nothing's all on. I want to watch is yep. an early 90s yep. thriller with Lou Diamond yep. Phillips. Not wrong. All I want. Uh, Teresa Johnson titles, TJ. Her, titles her review, The First Power, and writes this back in 2001. And it's all in caps. I loved this movie. As a matter of fact, I just watched it yesterday. Lou is a great actor. And I can honestly say that I enjoyed all of his movies I've ever seen him in. And this is my first time reviewing a movie, but not my last. <laughs> no, she did not review anything else on Amazon. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Yes. Nothing, 2000 nothing has to risen 2023. to 2023. Yes. Um, a couple interesting things about this. This movie was the uh, favorite film of late rapper Eazy E. Uh, this, um, the, the, um, the music for the first power was all done by Stuart Copeland, the drummer and founding member of the police. <laughs> so interesting there. Budget of this movie? 10 mil. Okay. Right? Gross? 22.4. It was a hit. Okay. It was a hit. A little hit, but it was and a hit. And it's got a lot, a lot of that's got, there's a lot of stunts. There's a lot of like practical stunt stuff that's happening. When they drive the car off of the other car and it, like, wow. both of them would be evaporated. <laughs> both of them would be exploded into dust. And they walk away like, oh well. By the way, uh, at that point, doesn't the homeless woman like, just vanish? She with pops the, up from the, from no, the back but, seat. But, that, but then when he oh, yeah. gets up, I watched that three she, he, times. She and Tess are gone. But how? Magic. Okay. <laughs> I think it's magic, and I wish it was more explicitly said so. Um, I will say this. I didn't know we were going to do this, but when we announced that we were doing this movie, um, I got a text from one of the actors in the film who also said that they would like to show up, and it was from the horse. And the horse said he's ready... <laughs> to come back for a sequel. Wow. Yeah. He feels like there's unfinished business and he had a great time shooting it. Uh, and no, those weren't his, hor those weren't his hooves. Uh, <laughs> a lot of special effects magic. LDP is great. Uh, and he has some negative things to say about Jeff Corbett. But okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so the horse is in. What do you recommend this movie? Yes. Listen, as far as these movies go and the work that we do here, <laughs> I've found this movie to be very watchable. I, I did enjoy watching it. Of course, as someone was blowing out my hair at about 4 p.m. today and I was watching it with earphones in and I didn't explain to this stranger why I was watching it and why I was taking, you know, copious notes. <laughs> it, it, but I... I did enjoy it. I found it, I liked it. I agree. 
I agree. This is a very watchable movie. And it goes does, though, but Jason, real smooth. We are also mentally ill no, from no. this podcast. Well, I'm going to say so this. That's the problem. I watched this movie today. I also watched most of tomorrow's movie, which is Jonathan <laughs> Livingston Seagull. <laughs> A movie in which I genuinely was like, I might not survive this viewing because yeah, it's so, so like, insane. We're not well. So this is so fun compared to this that I was like, thank God this movie is at least having a good time. Now, if I saw this movie in 1990, I would have been furious. I would have been like, how dare you show me this and pretend it's a movie? Absolutely not. I just, I like this movie. I think there was too much potential that wasn't paid off. It could have been a great movie. I do think a better, like, cop could, like, I feel like Lou Diamond Phillips picked cigarettes and long coat, and that was it. it And I feel like they needed a little bit more. I I think the movie's mistake was making it about the cops. The most interesting story that's happening is Tess's. Or the psych- undercover. Or, the, sister, or an undercover. Yeah, or an undercover. Marguerite. But the psychic story is really interesting because for so much of the movie, she's not being trusted. She knows truths. She has information. And what part of the problem is that she's just along for the ride with this guy who's not interested in what she has to that's contribute. Right. And it would be much better if she was the main character and he was... Even if he had the same M.O., he was reduced in size to just being somebody who like wasn't... Like Honey, help- I Shrunk to Lou Diamond Phillips? Yeah, if he was... <laughs> yes, if he was teeny tiny, fit in a backpack. If he, if he arrived at every scene in a... Hey! Hey, you! <laughs> hey, come on now! This is blood! Mm. Um, I loved, because I loved, too, I, I also wish we'd gotten more of the villain's story because yeah. we get the scene in the with the with the grandmother and the you know you're that cop go to hell go to hell go to hell i was like give me give this woman 15 minutes of screen time give me more with this insane character i was like every moment that was fun the religious assassins all the stuff yeah. they were like bag we're lady, not interested bag in that lady yes we're the movie's not interested in those things but- they're like Get LDP smoking again. But the movie also fails because the sequel is that they didn't save the day. And we don't know anything else. Like, he's just in a hospital room. He's like, all right, buddy boy, let's go round two. Imagine if the movie had been about Tess. She goes through the whole thing. Lou Diamond Phillips is helping, blah, blah, blah. And we had that scene in them early on with the thing. And we reveal that he's the killer. He has been possessed. And sure. she, her only ally is now also trying to kill her. Way more interesting. That's the sequel. All right. You have been fantastic. T-shirt. Now, let's talk about t-shirts. Yeah, go ahead. LDPPD. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's really good. We did it, Boston. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, June. Thank you, Beth. Eat shit, assholes. Thank you for coming out. We love being here. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. All right, that's our show. Thank you to the Chevalier Theater, our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas. And if you want to feel like you were in the audience that night, well, you can get a shirt that that audience designed. That's right. That audience designed an amazing shirt. It's a shirt that I like to call the LDPPD, a.k.a. Lou Diamond Phillips Police Department with a police badge that says to resurrect, possess, and to see the future. You can snag the shirt at tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. You can also buy every shirt made from the summer tour right there as well. You can get them as stickers or mugs or t-shirts or hoodies. It's pretty amazing what you can do uh, on that site. I love it. I bought some stickers the other day. Uh, We also designed a brand new shirt. If you're going to come out and see how did this get made live, it just says parents sent out because we know that a lot of parents are coming out to see us and we appreciate it. So now you can have your special parents sent out shirt. Um, All right. If you have a correction, an omission, anything that you would like to add to our discussion about the great first power, give me a call at 619-PAUL-ASK. That's 619-PAUL-ASK. Or go to our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm, okay? 
leave your comments, your concerns, and we will get to them next week. All right. Also, because of the strike, Jason and I can't really plug all the shows and movies that we love. I will tell you, I love Joyride. But since I can't do that, give us a call at 619 Paul Ask and ask us for some advice. We probably will give you advice about bags, but we will also talk about more. Plus, next week on the Last Looks episode, you're also going to get a special deleted scene. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Remember, you can find us everywhere online at HDTGM, or you can even go old school and check out our website at HDTGM, where we announce our movies and where we're going and where we're going to be live. We're going to be at Largo in October. I don't think that show is sold out, but it is announced secretly. Um, Also, very important, just want to let you all know, we're on threads now. Yeah, we're on threads. So go check us out on threads. Last but not least, thank you to all the listeners who support the show every single week and our entire team. They're the best. I'm talking about our producers, uh, Scott Sani, Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Halford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, who makes our amazing social media videos. That's all I got. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Until then, bye for now. Oh